Laplace transform example circuit analysis. We want to find the inductor current ILT for T greater than or equals zero in this circuit. We assume circuit is in a steady state or sinusoidal steady state right before the closure of this switch at time zero. This is a good example to illustrate the use cases of Laplace transform, at least one of the use cases, which is uh, for after the closure of the switch, uh, this uh, closed circuit here this mesh will be in transient mode uh, and to find the transient current of uh, inductor um, it would be extremely helpful if we use the Laplace transform to convert or transform the circuit from time domain to S domain or Laplace domain and then solve the problem over there find the current of the inductor um, in S domain and then use inverse Laplace transform to get back to time domain and find the final uh, answer for the current of the inductor as a function of time during the transient response. Of course ultimately you would expect that without even analysis that in, in, at time infinity after the closure of the circuit uh, because of the existence of resistor um, the electrical energy is dissipated through thermal dissipation and the current would eventually uh, goes to zero. So that is the expectation for the final current of the inductor at time infinity after the closure of the switch. So now in order to uh, get to the point that we can start using the Laplace transform for this example I, will need, I, I first need to find the current of the inductor and the voltage of this capacitor C1 right before the closure of the switch. Those are the information that I need um, so that I can proceed with the S domain analysis. So we need to do a sinusoidal steady state analysis right before the closure of the switch when the circuit looks like this because the circuit the switch is still open. So the sinusoidal steady state circuit equivalent equivalent circuit for this given problem is this circuit in which cosine t uh, input voltage is just represented by a phaser with amplitude 1 and phase 0. Inductor is just an impedance with a value of J L omega. Omega is 1 radian per second as is given in this problem. That is cosine omega t where omega is 1. The resistor is half an ohm and the C1 capacitor in uh, steady state circuit equivalent is 1 over J C1 omega where C1 is 25 farad and omega is 1 radian per second. The same story about 1 over JC2 omega for C2 re representing C2. So now we have a series of four impedances, an inductor, a resistor, two capacitors, in series with a voltage source, and we just need to write a simple KVL, uh, which we are saying the voltage source is equal to current, phasor, IL, uh, in sinusoidal steady state mode, is equal, is equal to that current times 0.5 plus uh, J L omega, omega, which is J times 1 over 54 as given, minus uh, 1 over J C 1 omega, which becomes minus J 0 0.04, because C 1 is 25 farad in denominator. And then we have finally for 1 over J C 2 omega, we have minus 2 J. So simplifying this, it becomes um, 0.5 minus J 0.5. And then from there, we can compute that I L phasor is just one of one plus j which is equivalent to square root of two with phase 45 degree that's a phaser with amplitude square root of two and phase of 45 degree time domain representation of that in a steady state mode is just simply square root of two cosine omega t where omega is one uh, plus pi over four which is 45 degree and that means that is equivalent to cosine t minus sine t so the current of inductor uh, during the steady state mode is cosine t minus sine t up to t less than zero right before the closure of the switch so at time epsilon uh, zero minus epsilon which is represented by zero minus right before the closure of the switch the current of um, inductor is cosine zero minus sine zero which is one amp we also need the voltage right at that time for capacitor so we need to find that. Therefore, for that, we need to first find the steady state 
uh, time domain representation of the voltage. So we, we need to do the phase run analysis for the capacitor C1. So we do VC1 is just the current I times the impedance of that capacitor. So that is VC1. And then it's 1 over J1C omega, which is 1 over 25J. Uh, for the current, I'm substituting current from what we computed before. And then that means 1 over 25J is just simply J is represented by minus 90 degree numerator instead of denominator. And when you, sum, when you simplify that, you get to square root of 2 over 25 cosine T minus T because omega is 1. Minus 45 degree, which is the phasor phase here. Which that also is equivalent to 1 over 25 cosine T plus sine T. Now I can use that, so that is the final answer for the voltage of a uh, uh, capacitor. Therefore, um, time domain representation of um, voltage for capacitor is 1 over 25 cosine T plus sine T. And from this, voltage of capacitor right before the closure of the switch is just cosine 0 plus sine 0, which is 1 times 1 over 25 volt. All right, so having this information, um, now we can do, um, now we can transform uh, the circuit after uh, closure of the switch. Uh, from time domain to S domain or Laplace domain. So after the closure of the switch, we just have, since we are interested only in the current of inductor, we just need to deal with this closed circuit because now the switch is closed, this point is shorted to this point, this node is shorted to this node. So the equivalent circuit we are dealing with is this one before transforming to S domain. It looks like this one. The switch is closed and we have an inductor. Uh, with 1.5, uh, 1.54 Henry, uh, there is a current passing through it with a value right before the closure of the switch being 1 amp. We have the impedance, uh, which is a resistor, 0.5 ohm, and we have a capacitor, C1, 25 farad, um, and there is a voltage across that capacitor uh, right before the closure of the switch, we see one zero, uh, zero minus of 1 over 25 volt. And this is it. So this is the time domain representation. We now transform it, so this is time domain. We now transform it to S domain. In S domain, again, the whole thing is shorted. This is the switch that is closed, this switch. And um, now we have, now we have this inductor. Uh, we know that representation, S domain representation of an inductor is in impedance with a value of L times S. So L is 1.54 Henry, so it's 1.54 S. And uh, the current, um, inductor has a, uh, inductor requires that its current uh, does not change after the switch. It tries to force that unless it is impossible to force it, which if it, if it is the case in a problem, then it would transfer into uh, causing a spark. Uh, in this case, it, it is possible because of an existence of this uh, other components here. So it, it can force its current to stay the same 
right before and after the closure of the switch. So it's as if there is an e initial current in S domain for the inductor and we can assume that it's as if one amp current is going and conversion of a DC current in S domain becomes 1 over S. So you have 1 over S source, current source, and then after that you have uh, the impedance corresponding to resistor 0.5 ohm. And after that we have this capacitor which has an initial voltage and again capacitor would try to force the voltage to stay the same so continuity of the voltage matters to capacitor. So you have this initial voltage, it's a DC value, conversion of a DC to S domain becomes 1 over 25S. Uh, and then the, the equivalent cap without voltage is left here, and we, we know that the S domain representation of a cap is 1 over CS, where C is 25 Farad. So it becomes just 1 over 25 uh, it becomes 1 over Cs, which becomes uh, 1 over uh, 25S. All right, so with this, this is S domain, representation of circuit. Now we can write down um, the, uh, again, the um, KVL or mesh, and we can actually use Thevenin to convert this to a simpler format which is uh, similar to this scenario. And if we do that, we end up with uh, just a voltage that is flowing the other way. So you end up, if we can replace this thing here with its Thevenin equivalent simply by just uh, keeping the inductor 1.54S, and this, if, if it flows through the inductor, would result in a voltage with this polarity plus in the right hand side and the value of that voltage is of course current times this impedance which is uh, 1.54 s over times 1 over s which becomes 1.54 so now just be careful that these two voltages now have different polarities so when we write kvl if we if you still look for a current that is flowing to inductor like this, ILS, now we are in S domain, so everything is a function of S. And we use capital letters to indicate uh, the currents and voltages. So in this scenario, what we are interested in, we are saying, um, okay, so let's, let's write down the KVL. This current is passing through this impedance, and that impedance, and that impedance. So ILS times... Uh, 1.54 S plus 0.5 plus uh, 1 over 25 S is um, and then we have uh, this voltage source and that voltage source so you would say uh, is equal 1.54 minus 1.25s. All right, um, if you simplify this, you get to uh, the situation that IL over S is um, 1.54s uh, minus 0.04 that is 1 over 25, and then 1.54 S square um, plus 0.5 S plus 1 over 25, which is 0 0.04. Okay, so if you further um, exp expand this, you end up with I L over S is equal to K1 over S plus 2 over 7 plus K2 over uh, S plus 4 over 11. So we are using partial fraction expansion for this. Uh, and if you solve for K1 and K2, you end up to find out that K1 is 
minus 13 over 3 and k2 is 16 over 3 um, um, if if you're interested in just computing that uh, you can figure out that when you insert k1 and k2 and substitute them using these values you end up with the same thing over here um, so in summary now we have this portion and that portion and then we can use inverse uh, Laplace transform to get back to time domain so ILS becomes IL of T uh, and then K one, uh, minus 13 over 3 divided by S plus 2 uh, over 7 becomes minus 13 over 3 e to the minus 2 over 7 t and the other one that we have k2 is substituted by 16 over 3 and then for 1 over s plus 4 over 11 we have e to the minus 4 over 11 t and the whole thing should be multiplied by u of t which is just a step function meaning that this whole thing is valid for time uh, greater than or equals 0 so this is the final answer, the transient response uh, for the current of uh, the inductor after the closure of the switch. And as you can see, if T0, then IL0, which is IL0 plus effectively after the closure of the switch, is minus 13 over 3 because E to the 0 is 1. The same thing, E to the 0 is 1 plus 16 over 3 becomes 3 over 3, which is 1 amp matching what you found before for the right before the closure so this is right after the closure and if t goes to infinity then both of these um, exponent are going to infinity so e to the minus infinity becomes zero therefore the current approaches zero uh, 